I wanted my rocks and particles to fly and bounce off the walls and the floors like in Hollow Knight, where smashing rocks and statues is insanely addictive. The only problem is, my game is a top-down 2D game on a completely flat surface. So in a physical and technical sense, there are no walls and there is no ground for the particles to bounce off of. So how do you make the particles bounce when there is nothing to bounce off of? Well, in this video I'll show you. It turned out to be way harder than I expected, but in this video I'll break down how I hacked fake 3D particles into my 2D game. Now the current particles just feel bland. They do make the game better and some interaction is it's pretty much a must have when you hit stuff. But the lack of physics is just straight up disrespectful to the players. And after playing a little bit of Hollow Knight, I wanted to replicate the effect of particles bouncing for my game. The first step is to make the particles interact with the world somehow. They don't need to look right, but the particles should physically interact with the world. My first idea was to use mathematics to simulate the particle movement, so that, you know, the z equals zero level would be the floor, and then I would somehow use 2D colliders with additional computation for the third dimension, but I mean, it's just, I had no idea how I was gonna do that, and it probably wouldn't even work great anyway. So the next idea I had was to use these 3D colliders for the particles only. I added this layer for only particle collisions and other visual effects that need kind of this pseudo three-dimensional space. So I added first the ground collider and I added a box collider for each tile in the game. This was simple enough, but then it was time to make the particles work with these colliders. Now in Unity this is luckily easy enough, you just take your existing particle system and you go into the collision tab, enable colliders and set up the colliders to work with 3D colliders. And you can see it's immediately working. And you can see the particles are bouncing off the walls and the ground and that's just great, like that, that's super simple to set up, it's already working, isn't that just great? But there's a small problem when we look at the particles in game. Now suddenly when we're in the game view, they don't look so di three dimensional after all. Now they are bouncing off the walls, which is great, but where is the verticality in the effect? And when we go look at the scene view, we can see that the particles are still bouncing in three dimensions, but the problem here is that the camera is actually pointing straight at the third dimension. This means that when the particles are bouncing up and down, the camera doesn't actually pick up any of that movement. And if the camera was using perspective, then the size of the particles would change. But with an orthogonal camera, which 2D games are usually using, even that effect is lost in the projection. At this point I was lost, and if not for my software developer job, where I learned how to visualize point clouds and in the process learned what vertex shaders are and what they do, I would have had to give up. But I somehow had this idea that I could use a vertex shader to vi try visualizing the Z position of the particles by using a vertex shader. The idea is to basically add the Z coordinate of the particle to the Y coordinate so that we can see the height of the particle even when the simulated height of the particle is kind of on the wrong axis. I basically made this super simple shader that basically all it does is it takes the position of the sprite or the corners of the particle sprite and it applies the Z position into the Y position. This gives it kind of this movement. Now, technically I would argue that this is actually mathematically how you should do orthographic projection of height in a technical sense. Now it's been a while since my computer graphics course, but 
If you are a computer graphics enthusiast, maybe you can enlighten us all in the comments down below. And now after applying this new shader to the material I used to render the particles, we can take a look at the effect and basically see that it's now looking a lot more three-dimensional. In the game view, the particles are actually bouncing up and down and hitting the walls and the uh, and the floor of the level. And in the editor view we can see that the particles marked by the orange boxes are jumping and bouncing. But when we look at the particles in the, the actual particle textures, they no longer match the position of the squares. And this is what the shader is doing. It's moving the visuals of the particle, the rendered particle, to a different position than is the physical representation of the particle. And it totally works, the particles look like they are in three-dimensional space. Now the next step to making this effect even better would be to scale up the particles as they rise higher in the air. I try to do that, but I'm still having a little bit of trouble with the shader code. And I feel like the issue is something has something to do with the fact that the corners of the sprites don't actually know where the center is. And this, these kind of transformations require to know the positions of the corners in relation to the center or some kind of center point. So if we are trying to scale a sprite, but the corners themselves don't actually know where they exist, then it would be impossible to scale the sprite correctly. And actually, as I was recording this video, I had the idea that maybe I could use the UV coordinates of the vertices as reference for where the vertices are located. This might actually work, but I'll add a clip if I get it to work. Yeah, now I even got the height effect working where when the particles are high in the air, they grow in size. Now I think it could still be adjusted a little bit. Uh, it should probably take into account the position on the screen as well, but I think that might just complicate it a little bit too much. And I'm not sure if that data is really that easily available to the shader anyway. Uh, now it doesn't really matter, I'm uh, satisfied with the effect now and it's definitely good enough so that you wouldn't really even notice if I made it any better. Now the code for it isn't even too bad, it has this property, float property for the scale, uh, how much the scale effect is affecting the particles, and it basically uses the UV coordinates as reference for where the vertices are located. And then we basically scale the size of the particles based on the Z coordinate as well. But overall, now the effect is working and it's looking really great in my opinion. It's a massive improvement from what I had before. I also, in addition to the rocks, I added it to the enemy splatter. And you can see that as the enemies uh, are hit, the particles fly in three-dimensional space and then they can hit the walls and the floor. And that's pretty cool, but uh, it's. I think the effect really shines when it comes to the walls and the rocks, as well as, for example, this minecart and these uh, buckets of coal that fly out when you hit them. Later, I also want to add stuff like broken tools and signs and more like bigger objects where physical pieces fly out when they are broken. And maybe a, when you defeat a skeleton enemy, maybe the head becomes a particle that can interact with the walls and the floor. I think adding these effects and these like simple details that are consistent throughout the game, it really improves the whole feeling of the game. And as a solo dev, the best part is that once you implement something like this, adding it anywhere in your game has no incremental cost. It takes you no extra time to add this effect to anything you are developing next. Because the heavy lifting is already done once you've got the effect working. Now if you want more breakdowns of systems like this as I build my game, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one.